in in our own behalf and in our desire to try to resolve this, you know, as personal citizens, we have not received responses. Not just that we haven't received favorable responses, but we've received no responses whatsoever. And we've also been told on plenty of occasions, call us, call us, meet with us. And we we did that, and no one has responded. Um, Specifically, this first meeting, you and Greg Pennington both were very said you were very eager to talk with us about yeah. these cases, and we emailed every staff person, Wells Fargo executive yeah. who was at that meeting, requesting a meeting, and I, I not think, one person responded to us. Yeah, I think part of it, and I mean, I'm just being real, okay, because that's just how I am. I think part of it is that, you know, our success that I've experienced has been working with the customer directly. And that has worked. And um, that's the way I want to continue to work. Because if, if you're having issues, I want us to be able to sit down and talk and say, okay, you know what? Let me see what I can do to help you. Um, part of my role that I have here is, is, I mean, that's why I actually took this role, is to be able to work with people one-on-one. -on -one to be able to work with people to find resolutions. Um, that's, I mean, to me that works well. So then you then you and I can sit here and like eyeball to eyeball and say, okay, you know, say, okay, this is what's going on. And I can say, let me, okay, let me find out some more information and get back to you. Um, so I'm, I'm glad you guys are here and um, we're gonna talk. Great, well, um, one of the things that I've noticed in my own struggles is that no matter where an individual is in this process, even past the point of eviction, um, past the point of foreclosure, past the point of unlawful detainer, past the point of foreclosure notice, past the point of being 60 days late, I'm, I'm being, you know, obvious, mm -hmm. but that there has always, always been a, a way to resolve the matter favorably not only for the homeowner or for the person who desires to remain in the home but for the lending entity for the yeah. bank so what i've yeah. recognized is even though each case is unique I, the gamut there's been a way to resolve each yeah. one equitably for both the lender and the lending yeah. so yeah. i i again just and coming here to this table because I recognize that this is easily resolved, easily. And I, I, I know that you are an integral piece to that because you are desirous, or you say that you are desirous to be an integral piece well, to that, so. My mom looks down on me every day. And I know, <laughs> you know, that she wants me to do the right thing, and so I, I, I'm about that. You, you know? gotta do the right thing. Yeah, you gotta I have want to do you. Right you. Well, want and Miguel, right right we know, we actually know about you and your background. You've done a lot of really great things. Okay. So, I'm, I'm hopeful yeah. too. And you know, the reason why people organize together in organization is because they aren't getting the results that they sure. need from individually going to Wells Fargo. We've been working with Nation Star, for example, now, and by organizing together. There's a fellow named AJ at Nation Star who goes to a certain department at Nation Star, and every single one of our cases with Nation Star is resolved within a week when we contact them. So we would love to be working that way with Wells Fargo. It doesn't have to be about the organization contacting you. We'd be happy to have the homeowners talking directly with you. Yeah. Um, if you're willing to make a commitment that you will meet with these 18 families and try to resolve their cases, we would be very happy with that. I know that, that so th are these a total 18? Right now, that's what we have. Okay. Just like before, it's, it has been a failure to communicate. Mm -hmm. You say like one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. we'd be happy to parade them down here for you to talk to. Yeah. I mean, you know, and it is important when you're talking to someone one-on-one -on -one and right. you're looking them dead in the right. eye and mm -hmm. see, right. you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, this is my situation and I'm so serious about it. Yeah. You know, I want to stay in my home. Can't we right. do something together to make that happen? Yeah. But it's kind of hard to make things like that happen if you can't get in touch with anyone that's right. willing, who's willing to listen to you and, you know, to hear your story. You know, it's not, uh, contrary to popular belief, it's not people who are you know, get into loans that they can't pay. Because like, a lot of times the situation don't change, the income doesn't change. Yeah. It's the loan, the circumstances of the loan yeah. that change. 
Yeah, well, you know, I, I come from a large Mexican family. We understand that <laughs> some of the problems that you've had as a bank were your legacy, legacy loans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's from Wachovia's particularly owner, really bad. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a, a good example of communication problems, when they were evaluating, during one of my evaluations, they wanted to charge flood insurance for the house in Diamond Heights. And I said, yeah. that's kind of silly. And I calculated that the Wells Fargo headquarters building would have to be entirely underwater before a flood ever hit Diamond Heights. And they're in Ohio or wherever, Omaha, and they said, would you have to have flood insurance? She said, no. <laughs> Earthquake insurance should be a bad Earthquake insurance, sure, but flood insurance, like, right. why?